In the hierarchy of the Catholic Church, after Pope Francis, the head of the Church, the next most senior title someone can have is Cardinal. The Cardinals are chosen by the Pope to be his sort of inner counsel, as it were, to give him consultation and, and advice on how to help run the Church. The second reason is, re is because the Cardinals are the ones who will elect the next Pope as well, so their position is very important in that regard. The Cardinals are personally chosen by the Pope. He alone has the power to make someone a Cardinal. They help him to govern the Catholic Church, and so the Pope might choose people for whom he has you know, great esteem or whom he has heard good things about. It's up to the Pope's discretion to choose who he wants in his College of Cardinals. There are two key groups of Cardinals, electors and non-electors. Only Cardinals under the age of 80 are permitted to vote in a conclave for the next Pope. As the rule is, once a Cardinal turns 80 years old, they are called non-electors and no longer allowed to take part. Cardinals who are over 80 or who, you know, they were made Cardinals before they turned 80 and then they turned 80, um, it, it's kind of an honor, especially those who are created Cardinal after they've already turned 80. They're not, they already know they're not going to participate in a future conclave. Yeah, the over 80 uh, cardinal choices are really because they've distinguished themselves in some way um, and they've given a long service to the church. And what makes the cardinals even more important is not only will they select the next pope, but he will almost certainly come from within the group with no age limit, meaning any one of them could be picked. The last time a non-cardinal was elected pope was in 1378. At the moment, there are 221 cardinals in the world. Of them, 119 are allowed to vote for the next pope as they are under 80. With this new consistory, Pope Francis will create 21 new cardinals, of which 18 are under 80 and so will have a vote in the next conclave until they too turn 80. This means that Pope Francis will have created 121 cardinals from 66 countries. That's 55% of all the cardinals. And of the ones who can vote, Pope Francis will have created 98 of them. That's 72% of the cardinal electors. Pope Francis has had nine consistories out of 10 years, which is way more than any other Pope before in the modern age. Just think that John Paul II had nine consistory to create new cardinals in 27 years. So it's way more. An expression has been used that Pope Francis is flooding the College of Cardinals, or in other words, stacking the decks with men who share in his vision and hopes for the future of the Church, cementing his legacy. What it means is that the Pope, I think because he's getting to the end probably of his pontificate, that he wants to bring in as many like-minded cardinals as he can, um, just in case, you know, he gets called to the Lord at, at some point in the next few years. So he's got the, the College of Cardinals set up to choose a successor who'd be probably more like him. So with Pope Francis and this upcoming consistory, who are the type of men he is selecting to become cardinal, and where are they from? This pope, compared to other popes, has traditionally chosen less of those, those archbishops who are kind of expected to become cardinals. There are those uh, dioceses, archdioceses in the, in the world that traditionally always had a cardinal as the head, and he has instead chosen uh, men from many different places in the world, and often places that have never had a cardinal countries that have never had a cardinal before. The home countries of the cardinals are changing too, with Pope Francis selecting more from parts of the world never before having a cardinal. Pope Francis had already changed this and, and made it much broader. I mean, it used to be that the College of Cardinals was mainly even just European uh, bishops. So the fact that now we have cardinals spread out all over the world, I mean, even, you know, a cardinal in Mongolia, for example, there's only a small Catholic population there. From Mongolia to South Sudan, another one of the new cardinals that will be created is Stephen Aminu Martin Muller. Another interesting thing would be, you know, this, the, the, the creation as a cardinal of the Archbishop of Juba in South Sudan, because South Sudan is a, is a place very dear to the Pope, and Cardinal Parolin went back to South Sudan in August, so there is a sort 
of very uh, high level of interest in the country by the Holy See. He's also chosen, I think, three cardinals from the Global South who aren't usually chosen. I think in this particular consistory, I think most of them are very much um, following the Pope Francis's vision for the church, and that's why they've been chosen. Another important cardinal-elect is Bishop Stephen Chow Sai Yang from Hong Kong. There's the whole issue of growing closer relations with, with Beijing, and so I think he's seen as a very important, uh, playing an important role in that. Um, he's a Jesuit, so of course close to the Pope in that regard, and I think the Pope sees him as a, a natural ally in trying to increase or improve relations with China. Pope Francis has said that these new cardinals represent the universality of the Catholic Church, one that he said he hopes will continue to proclaim God's love and mercy. The consistory, when they will be given their red hats, takes place this Saturday, September the 30th, in St. Peter's Basilica, here at the Vatican. In Rome, Colm Flynn, EWTN News, In Depth.